Good evening. I wrap scene with your metal market wrap up and this wrap up is for the evening as we're here now on Monday, the 18th of March, 2024, 6, 10 p.m. Central Time. Well, the stock market, meh, just back and forth action tonight. However, tonight what people are going to look at is what does the Bank of Japan do? What does the Reserve Bank of Australia do? And on Wednesday, what does the dot plot look like for the U.S.? In the meantime, we do get some news tomorrow. We're going to get U.S. housing starts and permit data. You know, interest rates have, uh, they had come down for a bit. Now they're climbing one more time. Redbook Group will update their weekly sales. They've been running about a 3% increase. The Federal Reserve FOMC meeting begins. It's a two-day meeting. It ends uh, on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. We get the statement along with the dot plot. And tonight we'll get the Bank of Japan and the Reserve Bank of Australia is monetary policies. Now, the simple fact is we're still looking at inflationary markets. If you look at the copper market, it's 413 a pound. This is a market that was recently 370, 375. If you look at the energy markets, you're $82 a barrel. It's not inexpensive. And while you're down tonight in Rebob Gas, you know, the Rebob Gas was just recently in the 260 area. It's put on 12 cents. Now, the interesting part is the Biden administration is saying, guess what? We're going to go and we're not going to follow the congressional mandate. We're going to keep 140 million barrels. And I talk about this in the strategic reserve. Well, I don't know how they can just take that away, but we'll find out what they mean by that. Again, it's a political year. The Biden administration plays games every time we get near an election. Need I tell you what they were telling us uh, before the November uh, last year event, all right? Uh, come uh, September, October, all kinds of promises. They were refilling the strategic reserves. They were going to buy oil in the $70 range. They didn't end up doing it. Now they want to buy it at 79. Well, the market's at 82. They're still not at that point, but they'll come up with something interesting, they say. We will see if they can do what they say. In the meantime, you've got to think inflation has still got to bite. Now, while the gold market lost its upside momentum tonight. It can gain it back tomorrow with a strong close. Let's take a look at what I mean. Right now, we're just starting the week off. We're up 0.12% tonight at uh, 2164.20. But you've had a correction going on with lower highs, lower lows in the market. If it wanted to completely break down, the potential could be there to get to the 2127 level. The market had a vertical price rise that it's now correcting a bit. I think you can see that. And as I've said so many times, you can often wait and you'll be able to, if you're coming in, instead of buying over a Bollinger Band, you try to buy within the band. Now, here's what happened in a negative way. If you take a look at the slow stochastic reading here, the market on Friday had a 79.20 reading. It didn't lose the reading. It lost it today on the close, and that was when the market was 21.64.30. Now tonight, the market is sitting at 21.64. It's remaining lost. As I said, it could regain it if it had a very, very powerful day tomorrow to the upside, which is always possible given we've got these reserve banks coming out with their statements. Although I'm not of the opinion that this nor the dot plot is going to have big impacts other than short periods of time. I think inflation is baking itself in. I think stagflation might be a word that we're going to have to live with here for a bit. In the gold-silver ratio, you've come down back into that 85 ratio, and you're getting a little bounce in the market. Silver looks stronger than gold. It's keeping its embedded reading. If a gun were put to my head, which one do you want to own? I'd rather own the silver than the gold right now because it's got the embedded reading and it's holding up. Plus, instead of it staying over that Bollinger Band and shooting, it moved to the right-hand side. It's just a better-looking chart at this point. Copper has a move that is similar to gold. You had a big move up and over the upper Bollinger Band. In large part, this is because we're seeing a turnaround in some parts of China's economy. That helped the market. The market kicked itself up about four days ago here, and it caught the shorts on a breakout move. Now, 
on pullbacks. I think you're gonna see strong buying in this market. I think it'll be difficult to get down and under the 394 level and stay there, given the current fundamentals we're seeing. In the platinum market, I was looking for a correction. This one acted the best of the charts and looking for that. I had said the combination of the 200 day, 100 day average and the black line, the Bollinger Band, a lot of resistance for that market to overcome and it couldn't. Now the support's back at 9.12.30. Last in the dollar, the market is up today over the 100 day average in the 18. Is it a one day event or is this gonna prove to be a resistance zone? Obviously, at this point in time, the trend is up. Higher lows, higher highs, and over the key moving averages. Should it wanna reach higher? You have potentials that could be in the, let's call it the 10380, 104 zone. That's a possibility. Or it could just fight its battle right here. I say or for a reason. Given that you have three central bank meetings coming right at you now, uh, the, the Australia, Japan, and the U.S., and then we've got Bank of England right around the corner, there's a lot for us to digest, and the dollar will look at all that information. Suffice to say, it's not in the downtrend anymore, and I don't see anything on this pattern that instantly puts it back into one. So to me, that's fairly important. So. I'm gonna be talking about all this as the events unfold. Tonight, I'll be waiting to see before I put out my 8 p.m. update in writing, what, is, what do we get from the different banks? What is the reaction to it? Good chance we'll get that before I go to bed. If not, I'll write about it first thing in the morning and you'll see me as I talk here about that. But at the five in the morning update, I will have a lot to do in the marketplace in terms of discussion of what the banks did, the reaction to the marketplace, where they're at. So between the morning futures video, that's for subscribers, this is not the free one on YouTube, my twice daily written updates, you get entry points, what to do, where to do them, monetary risk discussed, price objectives discussed, is it a momentum trade or a price trade, swing trade, what type of trade does it look like to me? I talk about all that and I give you the reasons why between the video and the writing, you get a pretty full picture as to what I'm thinking in the markets. So how do you get this? It's simple. If you haven't tried it, go to our website at irapstein.com free offers. If you have had a free offer, give it a try by going up here, click at the top there. You can get to our website at any point and go to the word research. That's a great way to do it. And right there is where you can sign up to get this, but it's going to be important over the next week. We just have so much data first coming out in these banks, and then we don't have to worry about things for another two months at least. And that becomes the fun time to trade. So can't wait for it. I've been waiting for this for a while. I'm I Rapstein. I'll speak to you all in the morning update and my other updates I record tonight. You have a good evening.